Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Now, something a little different across the country. More than 40,000 Indigenous Australians rely on groundwater for their water supply. Many face challenges when it comes to accessing clean water. In response, engineering firm Oricon has established Project Gilgi. It's an Indigenous community water treatment plant. It's been touted as a major breakthrough in water purifying, pumping groundwater through infiltration, uh, through filtration, I should say, and other treatments. Louise Adams is the chief executive at Oricon, Australia and New Zealand. She joins me now. Louise, thanks so much for your time. Congratulations on a number of innovation awards that Gilgi has received. I know Oricon as well received the AFR uh, Innovation Award. Uh, tell me about Gilgi. Explain to our viewers the scope of this initiative and what it's achieved. Yeah, thanks, Kieran. Look, it's been wonderful recognition that we've got. And as you say, really off the back of this project, the AFR Social Impact Award, we also picked up the most innovative professional services firm and the most innovative firm altogether. So we were pretty blown away. And it's a great reflection of our people's passion for innovation. And I think particularly special off the back of this project, because for an organisation like us, the sorts of people we hire, particularly our engineers, this is often why they become engineers, so that they can have this impact and, and do these great sort of projects. And I think, as you've said, you know, I, I'm here in Melbourne. For us, us in big cities, we take for granted the ability to walk up and turn a tap on and have clean, uh, drinkable water. And the case, it's not the case for remote areas of Australia, and particularly for many of our Indigenous communities. They have to rely on that groundwater, and, and often that the quality of water in the in the groundwater is doesn't meet our Australian uh, standards for drinking water quality. Um, so they're either forced to to drink uh, substandard quality water, or they can rely on um, getting water trucked in from from regional centres. And in some cases, these regional centres can be hundreds of kilometres away. So Project Gilgai really set out. So the team set out to break down what it, what was that challenge about, and and how do they come up with a solution. And so we worked with our partner, Amp Control, who are also an Australian-owned technology company based out of the Hunter, um, to come up with a water treatment plant that was firstly modular. So it's very easy to manufacture. And in fact, these plants can be put together now in less than three months. Um, and because they're modular, they can be put on the back of a truck, uh, taken into these communities. And because they've been pre-manufactured, they can be set up within a couple of days. Um, importantly, they are uh, off the grid, they're solar powered, which means that so you don't have to be reliant on any form of um, power, you know, in the local community. And then lastly, that they can be easily maintained and managed locally. That's really important that the communities can own this. So we worked yeah. particularly in this case with a community at Gillenbor in northwest west of Alice Springs. And so it really was a creative idea that over a number of years has developed into an innovation that really has transformed the community from, from a community that was reliant mm. on water being trucked in from Alice Springs to now owning, managing, maintaining their own, their own supply. I'm interested to know, Louise, uh, as you said, it's a Melbourne, your company, uh, Oricon, is headquarters in Melbourne, an Australian engineering company, uh, and that focus on the Indigenous communities, obviously, it's a wonderful achievement, this one. But how much scope is there across the country to utilise it in remote communities? And I'm wondering also, in our region, are there other nations that would be interested in this sort of technology? Yeah, look, we're already close, in close talks with the Northern Territory Government to identify other communities. As you said, there's hundreds of communities, remote communities around Australia that can benefit from this technology. So we're talking to the Northern Territory Government uh, there's going to be similar opportunities in South Australia, Western Australia, Queensland, wherever there are remote communities who don't have access to sustainable, clean water that they can manage and maintain themselves. Across the Asia Pacific, there's, there's going to be similar um, opportunities. You know, clean access to clean water is one of the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals for 2030. So we think there's endless opportunities. The other area that we're looking at is pivoting this idea uh, into other scenarios where you might need access to clean water in this sort of modular setup. And if you think about the experience that we had here in Australia last year off the back of the devastating bushfires that impacted so many of our communities, if you think about floods or cyclones, when you go uh, having these natural disasters in that instantaneous recovery period, often afterwards, access to clean drinking water is disrupted. Either the water supply is contaminated or there's no access to power. So if you can imagine having a modular um, opportunity for a modular water treatment plant that you can put on the back of the truck and quickly take into one of those communities um, to, mm. to provide such an essential water supply after in the disaster recovery period is really important too. So huge opportunities across the board. 
Yep, and it seems like exactly the sort of innovation and uh, Australian know-how the Prime Minister is talking about that we need in this uh, post-COVID recovery. Louise Adams, Chief Executive of Oricon Australia and New Zealand, live from Melbourne. Thank you very much on Project uh, Gilgai, a wonderful initiative. Now, uh, let's turn our attention to 